um, I'm going to find the slope of the line that passes through these two points. So this is a, a line that passes through negative 3, 6. There, negative 7, 3. find that rise versus run ratio, and how do we do that? Um, take one, no, the second one and the first one and the Okay, first one. so which one's the second one? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter, that's a good point to make, so uh, which one did you call the second one? Uh, seven, the negative this one? Yeah. It's the second one. Okay, so second y minus the first y over the second x, that's the important part. If that's the second y, then this needs to be the second x. Negative 3 minus negative 7. Uh, so 6 minus 3 is 3. And negative 3 plus 7 is four, so 3 points. Uh, so it doesn't matter which one is point 0.1 and point 0.2. What if we did it this way? What if we said y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2? Would that matter? It doesn't matter. As long as this comes from one point and this comes from the other point, it doesn't really matter. So I could call either 1.1 1 .1 or 0.2, and so apparently this, the respect of which one's first and which one's second, doesn't make a difference. Um, <coughs> So negative 4 plus 1, so we got negative 3 over <coughs> 6 minus 3, 3. So negative 1. And this one's 7 minus 5 is 2. Over negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So 1. So one slope is 1, one slope is negative 1. So are they parallel perpendicular in either and why? Are they parallel? Why not? They have the exact same slope. Are they perpendicular? Yes. Okay, why? Opposites. Not only opposites. Opposites. Reciprocal. Also reciprocal. Now, one is a special one. It's its own reciprocal. One over one and one over one is whatever it's the same. So, yeah, they are opposites and also reciprocals. Um, maybe I should have picked another problem and had that been more obvious, but they can't just be opposite of each other, negatives of each other, they have to be reciprocals as well. But if this line is a slope of 1, it's about like that, up 1 and over 1, like that, it's about a 45 degree angle, the other one's going to be negative 1, it's going to be coming in a perpendicular direction. Okay. Um, Here's 17, and um, what strategy are we going to use for 17 to graph it? Yeah, Jessica? You start at where you fill out intercept and then go in. Which intercept? The y-intercept. The start at the y-intercept at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, right there. Okay. Now, just pause it for a second. <laughs> The reason we do that is one of the easiest part, or one of the easiest points to find, right? How, if we were to, rather than say memorize these steps and say start at negative three on the y-axis and then follow this number for no one for, for some unknown reason to the next point, okay? Um, how would we mathematically find that uh, the point zero negative three is on this line? Put zero in. Put zero in for x, right? Put zero, that's where things usually go in. 
So it's zero in for x, this is gone. Anything times zero is zero. So zero minus three just gives us negative three. We can do that with anything that's in slope intercept form where it's just m times x plus b. So put zero in there and get negative three. Okay. Why don't we go up three and over two? Why is that the best thing to do? Why not go, like, could we, could we land on one of these points here? Why don't these look so good? <coughs> they're not exact. Yeah, they're not right on the grid. Right? They're not right on the intersection of two lines of the grid. So the next one that's right on the grid, that's where the slope comes up. Uh, the next one is going to be, we can see by looking at, the, at this fraction, it's going to be 2 away. right? Multiples of 2 are nice numbers to plug in for x. Why is that? It comes along. Yeah, this denominator 2 will cancel out with a multiple of 2 that you're here, because you can think of it as over 1. So if you put a 2, or a 4, or a 6, or an 8, or any multiple of 2, all those will cancel with that 2, leaving no denominator, no weird fractions. We're going to be exactly on the grid. So if we put in 2, 2 cancels with 2, uh, and we're just left with 3 times 1, so that's 3. 3 minus 3 gives us 0, so 2 comma 0. Or if we're on this graph, we just know by that, that pattern, for every two, we could go this way. Every two that we go over, we're going to go up three. If we go over another two, we'll go up another three. And that just makes short work of all of it. It makes it much easier to work with if we find those easy to find points. OK, now 32, that's not in slope intercept form. What, did you remember what you call that form? Standard form. I don't know why it's standard. Seems to me the slope intercept form is one we use a lot in this pretty standard. And I've had different books called the same form of equations, different names, so <coughs> I'm feeling it's not very standard, just standard for this book. Anyway, um, that's 32, here's 32. Okay. So what strategy are we using? Again, remember we're drawing lines and all we need is how much, what, what do we need to draw two, a line? Two, two points. points. We find two points. So the easiest way to find two points here would be to first, what? Yeah? <coughs> you could subtract, okay, so you could subtract 2x from both sides and get it into this form, right? Yes. You could do it that way, absolutely. And then do slope intercept form and you'll have it. Um, and if that's the way you prefer, I would say do that. But I'm going to spend time talking about this just so that, like, the more we can talk about math and manipulating numbers, the better we'll be. So, and that, I guess you could argue that way's easier. I, I would say there's an easier way still. To find two points, all we're trying to do is find two points to graph this line. So, what was the way we talked about the other day? You put zero in for y, and then call. Zero, why is, it so, why, why is it a clever thing to put a zero in for y? Because <coughs> it makes negative x, six disappear. Yeah, this is gone, right? If we could just get rid of it completely, just that variable, and as far as that's concerned, it's just gone. And all we have is 2x equals negative 12, if we put a 0 there. So we know that we'll get out 0 for y, and what will we get for x if that's the case? Negative 6. And divide by 2, divide by 2, negative 6. We'll do the same thing, but put a 0 in for x, which means that part's gone, it's eliminated, and now we have negative 6y equals negative 12, we get 2. There we go, negative six, zero, zero, two. That's why they have those two points uh, in this example. If we did solve it for, uh, for y and get it into slope intercept form, then you'd see zero, two. You'd see zero, two, and then you'd see probably another point right there uh, following that slope down one and over three, down one to the left three. So, or you'd probably see that over here. And just a, a reminder here, there's no x here, right? So no matter what happens with x, what will be true about this equation? It's just what it says. Y is negative 2. No matter what x is, y is negative 2. Okay, so we look at the graph. Where is y equal to negative 2? Down there. Up here, no. Down there, no. Yes, only here, vertically, is y equal to negative 2. So if we want y to be equal to negative 2, we've got to stay at that height. We call it that height. So 
you see right here, all along this line, doesn't matter what x is, y will always be equal to, and that's what the equation is trying to uh, keep true. Any questions from the quiz? Any questions from some other part of the homework? Back to the Future, I can answer those questions. Well, there's been a lot of answers about Back to the Future. Any questions? Go ahead and pass your own work time. Today, the energy is low. Very low. It's what? Very low. Why? 